The second glass of wine goes down a lot quicker than the first, and before any of us notice, the second bottle is empty. While Akira is helping us finish them off, Hanako looks to be almost equaling her in the amount she's had. My head feels a little light, but I think I've managed to gorge my own tolerance surprisingly well. Hanako smiles lazily, toying with her doll's hair. I think it's a pretty safe bet that she hasn't moderated as well as I. I don't think it was Hanako's intention to get this drunk, but it seems that the alcohol hit her all at once. She has a very light frame, something which wouldn't help her handle her booze well either. Lily cradles her glass, running a finger around the rim. Her cheeks are rosy, but she's managing to avoid looking woefully drunk. Akira is, as I somewhat expected, largely unaffected. Her smile might be a little wider than before though, maybe. Hanako suddenly hiccups and knocks over the doll. I think I should maybe go to bed. Thank you, Hisao. Thanks, Lily and Akira. Uh, she slurs Akira's name pretty hard, barely avoiding breaking out into a giggle midway through. She's completely plastered, and I can't decide whether I should feel a little bad or not for being amused at the state she's in. It is really bizarre to see her acting so carefree. A shame that it's only with hell help of alcohol. Here, let me give you a hand. Akira begins to get up to help Hanako out, but she's stopped when Lily gives a sharp cough. Hisao, would you please? Akira looks a little surprised, and I have to admit that I am as well. I don't mind the request at all, let alone when it's said with such a smile. It just comes rather unexpectedly. Sh sure, no, no problem. I pick up the chess set and help Hanako stand up. I do feel somewhat responsible for her considering that, other than Akira, I'm probably the most server person in the room. She nurses the doll in one hand and offers me the other. We stumble out of the door into the hallway and into Hanako's room, Hanako bumping into me a number of times on the way. Inside the room, I flick on the light as Hanako turns her attention to a shelf on the drawer on her dresser. An elegant doll is sitting on it, staring into the bare room. There you go, you'll be safe in here. Hanako gingerly places the doll next to the other one and straightens its dress. They sit in silence, hair and clothes perfectly arranged, just like the teapot in Lily's room. They serve as a distinct contrast to the doll's whiteness and greys they permeate her bedroom. Satisfied that her dolls, her only real two possessions, are safe, Hanako takes a step back and stands up, staggering severely. I step forward to catch her if need be, but she gains her balance without my help. For a while, both of us stand in silence as Hanako looks downwards towards the cupboard. After a minute or two, she begins to sway a little from side to side. It's very off-putting. Are you going to be alright? Hanako raises her head and turns around to me as if she's only just remembered that I'm also in the room. What's unexpected is that she takes two steps towards me and wraps her arms around my body, her head coming to rest against my chest. I can feel my heart beating as all of my senses feel like they're coming alive again after their deadening through the previous drinking. The smell of wine on her breath, the feeling of her fingers through my clothing, the scent of her hair underneath my chin. My hands remain out in front of me, not daring to touch her. The temptation is there to hug her, to embrace her, to tell her everything will be fine. But this feels wrong. Really, really wrong. Hanako. But I want to stay with you and Lily. Hanako's slurring reminds me a bit of Misha. She probably wouldn't be pleased to hear that. You know I can't. You're a girl and I'm a guy after all, and Lily needs to sleep. She gives a disappointed groan. It's so strange for her to act so forward. Don't worry, I'll see you again tomorrow, okay? I decide to rest a hand on her head to reassure her, deciding that this is far as I'll allow myself to go in terms of physical contact with her while she's in this state. Hanako's head nuzzles against my chest. It makes me feel all the more uneasy with the situation. As her arms tighten around my back, I quickly decide to bail out. I rest my hands on her shoulders and give her a firm but gentle push. Her grip tightens a little as I do so, but she eventually breaks off. I don't want you to go. Hanako, please. Akira and Lily are going to start thinking weird stuff if I take too long here. It's perfectly true too. I don't really want to take any chances, and I feel very uncomfortable right now. I shouldn't try to read anything into the way she's acting right now. 
I read that aside from alcohol lowering inhibitions, people can react to getting drunk in many different ways that don't necessarily reflect reality. And even without that, there are plenty of ways to interpret what she's saying. As long as she's safe, I'm going to try and get her out of the room as soon as possible. Hanako hiccups again, looking a right mess as she stands and looks downcast in the centre of the room. Her personality changed as she drank more and more and now all alone in her room with me, her previous brightness seems to have left her. Was she just acting up beat to make sure we didn't worry? Even if she was, what could I possibly do for her, since I do exactly the same thing in regards to my own condition? Distancing myself from my thoughts, I eventually managed to coral Hanako towards her bed, though her attempts to tame the wild sheets on it end up accomplishing little. Sorry about tonight, Hanako. I know you probably won't remember any of this, but... Happy birthday. I'm sorry I couldn't do more for you. She looks up at me for a moment. I have no idea if what I said actually got through to her, but any chance to ask is lost as her eyes peacefully close. I sigh in relief before quietly backing away from her and leaving the room, flicking the light switch off as I go. I hesitate a little before opening the door to Lily's room again, quickly rehearsing what I should say if I get questioned about Hanako. After a few seconds, I still can't come up with anything. I open the door and make sure to close it behind me, lest any passing students catch any glimpse of wine, before turning my attention to the two girls at the low table. Akira's casually smiling, as is Lily. I welcome the change from the mood in Hanako's room. Is that you, Hisao? Yeah, I got Hanako to her bed. She's sleeping now. That's good. I have to admit, I hadn't thought she'd drink quite so much. Hey, it's fine. She's all safe and tucked up in bed now with the way she is. She awkwardly trails off, though Lily and I would hardly protest. For someone so anxious and fearful, drinking would give an easy out from those constant feelings. I wish I could do more for her, I feel useless. Looking at Lily, I think back to what I asked myself in town. My relationship with her is that of a friend, and has only felt that way. But now, I think I know why. Lily's been there for both Hanako and me since I first met her, but she's like that for everyone, trying to do her best to make them feel better. With that in mind, then what's the bond between me and Hanako? After rescuing our relationship following the panic attack, I inadvertently triggered during class. I feel like we're back to being friends, but she's on my mind more and more. I can't say I view any other girl in quite the same way, but maybe it's just a normal reaction to someone acting like this. Say Akira. She yawns before looking at me. It is getting quite late. You know about what happened with Hanako, don't you? Yeah, Lily told me. I negotiated pretty hard for a break so I could come down here and help her make her birthday a bit brighter. We get along pretty well. It's surprising to hear that some, from someone as extroverted as her, but if Hanako came to know her through Lily, maybe she had time to get used to Akira. And on that note, I'd better be going. I'm already going a bit late as it is but it's already so late sorry we got a bunch of work dropped on us so overtime it is she leaves herself with a she leaves herself up with a grunt and heads past me towards the door just before she leaves she turns back towards us you haven't forgotten about the time for the flight and all the rest don't worry i have everything ready it's just a matter of packing when it gets closer to the time to leave add a girl i'll see you guys later then and with that, she disappears through the door with her hand held high in farewell. Your sister is... something, all right. I probably should have thought of that comment through before saying it. Regardless, Lily seems quite amused at my appraisal. You okay after all that drinking, not wasted and just hiding it well? I assure you, I am quite all right. I can moderate myself. You seem quite self-possessed as well, if I do say so myself. Yeah, well, I guess your moderation applies to me as well. With a little hesitation, I take a seat at the table in front of Lily. I want to address this directly, if for no other reason than to settle my own thoughts. I've been meaning to ask this, but it took me a while to make up my mind. Do you have any idea what triggered that panic attack? I gathered it was something to do with her birthday, but I don't know anything more. Even Akira is being really careful around her, so I assume she knows as well. Lily smiles drops, the gaiety of the birthday party now well and truly over. To be honest, I'm not sure of all the details myself. Hanako told you that she was in a house fire, she told me as much, after we met and spend a lot of time together. Other than that, she quite simply never told me. She 
She never told you? Assuming the worst, what does she have to look back upon? A life of isolation and possibly even the death of her family? Maybe even go as far as blaming her for existence for their deaths? Even thinking about what little I know of Hanako's past is bleak. To have lived through all that and to live on with those memories must be infinitely worse. Lily looks similarly depressed, but I can see her rebuild at least some of her composure before my eyes. I get the feeling that both of us are talking more frankly than we might otherwise do thanks to the wine, but it feels like just talking this out is a good thing anyway. I feel kind of helpless about it. When it's put like that, what can I possibly do for her? I'm not wholly sure I should tell you this, but Hanako told me that you visited her the day after both we both went to check on her. I must admit that I did not predict she would take such a step so quickly after what happened, nor did I expect you to. I think it was a nice gesture on your part. It wasn't much, really. It's just, at times like this, I sometimes think it would be better if we never had to leave Yamaku, or at least this town. Things are so much easier without others around. I didn't expect Lily to look quite so troubled at what I say, and for a while she looks lost in thought. She moves to speak but stops herself as soon as she does and rethinks it's a bit off-putting. I think... Tell me, do you have anything planned for Friday evening? Friday evening? No. Isn't your flight to Scotland the next day? I don't think it would be a good idea to tire yourself out before you even get there. I'll be alright, you needn't worry about me. I do this tomorrow evening, but I imagine Hanukkah will be feeling rather off for a while. The thought of how she's going about tomorrow makes me grimace. Maybe we should count our blessings that she didn't end up simply throwing up from drinking so much while having such a low tolerance. Well, I'm going to be able to, to end whatever you are planning. What is it? Nothing unusual, I assure you. Just a little excursion. And you'd better be off, Isao. I can't imagine it's long at all until curfew is here. Oh, damn curfew. I'd, almost, I'd completely forgotten. I look at the clocks next to Lily's bed, but it seems to be some oddity without written numerals. Which I suppose makes sense, given Lily's condition. Not wanting to risk a haughty security patrol giving me a scolding, I get up and decide to go to my dorm as she says. Well then, I guess I'll see you and Hanako tomorrow, assuming that both of you manage to get up in the morning. Thank you for your concern, Hanako. Hanako, Hisao, until then. With that, I make my way out of the door and into the hallway. I hope our idea will be a good one. The hammering of a fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded into my head. Once, twice, three times, I let out a long annoyed breath and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whoever it is to just go away. I feel pretty damn awful, my face feels like it's cast out of lead, my arms feel heavy and I feel very queasy. It's been like this since I woke up half an hour ago and I can't summon the energy to pick myself out of bed. So. This is what they call a hangover. I wonder if perhaps this is the best treatment for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult. Considering how unpleasant this is, it's not something I want to repeat. A series of thumps ring out again, reverberating around the small room. I wish they'd just give up already. I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Seconds pass, turning into minutes, since no more knocks are coming from the door, whoever it was must have left. Thank goodness. Looking at my clock, this time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for class is approaching. I don't think I can manage it though. I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without needing to look in a mirror to confirm it too. The morning rush has given me enough time to stand outside the classroom for a little while before looking too suspicious. I hope the Mewtwo doesn't ask any awkward questions about my not attending school yesterday. I was sick, that much is true. It's just the reasons for it I, that I have to hide. Confident I can get away with the tactical omission of certain truths, I stride into the classroom doing my best to appear normal. The instant I open the door and take a step in, I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There is no way I'm imagining this. They're not even making any attempt to hide it. My eyes take a quick sweep around the classroom and I spot Hanako. We make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. 
Did she spill the beans? Mewtwo may be okay as far as teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something that would be taken lightly. I look up to him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thank you. He motions for me to take a seat. My legs feel like sticks as they carry me there. This is going to be a long day. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Hanako, did you tell? She looks up at me and shakes her head. That's a big relief. It's just... Just... Well, hello there, Hick-chan. It's nice to see you again today. I grimace and turn towards the unmistakable voice coming from behind me. That was way too upbeat for a tone of voice to feel comfortable, even from Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. Shizune's, though, is a very bad sign. The one she wears has become notched into my brain as her I have got you seven ways from Sunday smile. Hi Shizune, Misha. You, uh, you look happy to see me. Not feeling well yesterday, Hikchan? No, I wasn't, but I'm feeling better now at least. That's good to know, Hikchan. Why do I get the feeling Shizune is leading me into a trap? You sound like you're not being completely serious. Oh no, Hikchan. We're genuinely pleased to s that you're all better now. Shizune is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason like she would be like this. Oh no. In fact, we were quite worried about you. After all, you, Hanako, and Lily were all absent from the class on the same day. Yep, she's got us so thoroughly that all I can do is sigh in defeat. I guess you have your own theories about this. Can you just kind of not tell anyone? It's a bit late for that, Hikchan. I suppose she's right, considering the looks I got as I entered the class. Still, things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations, so we'll probably be fine. Hanako's face sinks a little further. Such attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone for her. Going by Shizune and Misha's reactions, I think they noticed this as well. The only reason why we're giving you such a hard time is that you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? It takes a while to recollect what happened, given the haze induced by the generally awful state I was in at the time. Alright, the knocking. That was you two? It was, and you left us there for ages after we'd taken all of the effort of coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry, I was having a problem with nausea? A problem with nausea. They're not buying it, I can't blame them. Shizune's head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little, and as she pulls it out, it turns to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. Since she points it towards me, I duly take it. This is what we were trying so hard to give you, Hikchan. You don't check your... I tune out the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes register what's written on the envelope. Iwanako? I stare at the envelope for a moment before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. There's a very strange, somewhat invasive feeling about their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwanako? It's nothing. Thank you for bringing me this, you two. I should think so, after what we went through to get it to you. I step back and say my goodbyes. Misha theatrically pouts even as I go out of the door. But Shizune and Hanako remain very visibly curious about my reaction. I hope they won't interrogate me on this later. The smell of gardens is always a very pleasant sensation. Some of the most visible signs of how well funded the school is. Aside from its sheer size um, are the expanse and condition of the grounds. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chatting and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying the summer here, keeping watch over the students and idly walking along the concrete paths. I'd never seen a site like this in my home city. On excursions, maybe, but certainly not never in the school or anywhere near where I lived. Even the bench I sit on to read is warmer thanks to the summertime sun, reminding me of why I haven't worn the school blazer even once yet. Considering this, the sunflowers and splashes of vibrant yellow colouring adorning the paper are quite appropriate for the time, if only the words written on it were as well. Here I was, thinking I'd managed to get over her, when this troublesome thing shows up. Uh, I only hate to think what it says. Mm -hmm.